Hi, my name is Garrett Cormier, and I'm going to go over sharing the gospel with a friend who does not believe. So the first part with sharing with you is that you have to start with creation, because without creation, there isn't really any point to going further. And unlike most religions, we have it to where God was alone, and he spoke the heaven and the earth into existence. And that's how the whole Bible starts. It starts with Genesis 1-1, and God created the heavens and the earth. Through that, he then would later create land and sea, light and dark, separating everything out into the world. And then after creating the world itself, seeing that it was empty, he created plants and created the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. And then finishing up with creating animals on land and different creatures on the land. And then ending on day six with creating us humans. So with that, with that he created two humans, a man and a woman, Adam and Eve were their names, and through that he allowed the rest of humanity to be created. Without Adam and Eve, the whole story wouldn't be there. We wouldn't have a need to keep going in the Bible. So through Adam, But through Adam and Eve as well, we see the introduction of sin. And that's where we see the perished kingdom is a usual sign. This is what we usually would call it. So you'll see reading on into Genesis chapter 3. So it happens very quickly that we already fail. We could eat everything in the garden. God gave us everything, gave us dominion over the animals and over the land and the earth and kept a relationship with us. But he said the only way to keep that relationship and keep you from dying is don't eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So the tree of knowledge and good and evil is the only tree that we couldn't touch. And with that, we see the enemy, Satan, which is the Hebrew word for enemy or adversary. We see him come in as a serpent, one of the creatures who we later see as a creature that we don't like, we don't trust, we don't want to touch, which is the snake. We don't want to touch the snake because we have of Adam and Eve. And through the serpent, he challenges Eve saying, you won't die, you'll become equal to God. And we see the first lie. Well, he's not fully telling the truth, he's not fully lying, because we do get the knowledge of good and evil when Adam and Eve eat the fruit. The problem is that the human mind, God didn't create us to be able to be equal to him. So when we did it, we aren't smart enough, we aren't built to handle the knowledge of good and evil. So we mix it up. And that's where the idea of relativism of what's good for you is good for you, what's good for me is good for me happens. So through that, we sin and we do die. We die spiritually and lose that connection with God and are kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And then we have a physical death that instead of having an infinite life, we have a set time when God decides it's your time is up. But because God loves us, he even promised another kingdom for you and me that we can live with him. He says in the beginning, right after, that he will send a child of the, dog, the man to stomp on the head of the snake, on the serpent, and defeat it. So he plans on sending someone to defeat Satan. Um, we see later, so later on in history, especially in Genesis, we keep going through and we meet Abraham. Abraham was called by Abram at the time and he was called out into the wilderness by God. And trusting him, he takes him and his family with him out into the woods. Now his wife was barren, but God promised that through his wife Sarai, who would later be known as Sarah, that he would create a great nation. And this nation would be called Israel. And when Abraham is a hundred, he has his son Isaac. And Isaac has his son Jacob. And Jacob later becomes the man known as Israel, for he wrestled with God and did not die. And through Israel, he has his 12 sons, which become the 12 tribes of Israel. And then we see the great nation of Abraham created. Um, but later on in history, with the coming of Christ, who is that hero from the beginning, who comes and will stomp on the head of the serpent, we see that we also become the family of Abraham, for the promise was that Abraham's descendants will be as numerous as the stars. And with 7 billion people on the earth, and according to studies 1.2 billion believe in Christianity there's a large amount and we also have to count that's only living we have to count all the followers of God and all the followers of Christ that came before us so we see that covenant fulfilled
Another way we see it is when God makes a covenant with David. So we go into First and Second Samuel, which is the main story of David and how he becomes king. Because David stayed so faithful to God before even serving as king, God re rewards him. It's kind of would be the best way to explain this as a reward. For your faith, I will keep your descendants alive. You will always have a descendant. And we see that true, and he's, the, the kingdom of David would last forever, is one way God says it is, you're always going to have a kingdom, your family will always be king. And even though the country of Israel splits into Israel and Judah, and they later be conquered by the Babylonians and the Assyrians, and then in the town of the New Testament by Rome, we still see that kingdom come through, because through one of David's descendants, Joseph, who is married to Mary, who is the mother of Jesus, we see that fulfilled, and Jesus is the fulfillment, fulfillment of that kingdom coming to life. And since Jesus can't die, and Jesus is fully God and fully man, the kingdom lasts forever. We also see, again, the fulfillment of Abraham, the covenant with Abraham, and we see God pro producing a family numerous as the stars, as each Christian becomes a child of Abraham through the covenants. We then see... The partial kingdom, which we mentioned earlier, Israel, which now is a nation in the Middle East, but before was in the similar area and was larger nation when they came and conquered all of Canaan through leaderships of Joshua after Moses freed them. But their descendants can originally be traced back to Jacob or Israel. And we see the 12 sons of Israel creating the 12 tribes. And each tribe has a different job. And with the Levites being one of the more known ones because they were the priests. They became priesthood and would lead Israel through their religious effects. And they set up the rules and guiding rules. But because humans couldn't have the relationship with God, we had to sacrifice and use someone's blood to cover it. Because God didn't want us to kill each other because that wouldn't show true love, he allowed animals to take that spot. But... An animal can't fully cover a human, and even humans can't cover each other's sins because we all sin. Therefore, you can't fully wipe away sin with another human, but you can't wipe away sin with an animal because, as we saw in Genesis 1, an animal is not equal to a person. So we need someone to come and fulfill that. And that's where we see the kingdom of Christ. And in the Old Testament, we see messages of Christ, and we see prophecies about God coming down as a man and saving us from our sins. We see it throughout all the all the prophets, but the main three that we see it in are Isaiah, Hosea, and Micah. Isaiah especially talks about how there will be a man of sorrows, how Christ will come down as a man of sorrows, be hated by the world, and be taken on into the to take over all of our sins. Because of Jesus, we are able to build that relationship. And we see that the failed, so there's the sons of Adam, the kingdom of Adam, which failed because they sinned against God, and then what becomes the kingdom of Christ, who doesn't fail because he's fully God and fully man, and he becomes the perfect sacrifice. And each of the prophets mentions that perfect sacrifice and mentions how even in the suffering of Israel at that time, with them being in exile, or going in exile, or coming from exile, and having their homes destroyed and having to rebuild, we still see that the prophets are like, it's bad now, but God won't abandon us. He will send Jesus. And that's where it's the present kingdom. And we say the kingdom of the Lord is at hand. It's not in the past. It's not in the future. It's now. Christ came down, died on the, he was born into a virgin birth, died on the cross, and was reincarnated, or not reincarnated, but re resurrected. So through that resurrection, because he defeated death, he defeated sin, we are able to have life. Jesus became what the Hebrews had was a scapegoat, a goat you'd send out in the wilderness to suffer for God's wrath. And the goats sacrificing on the cross, where the term scapegoat comes, is that this person takes the blame. And Jesus becomes that scapegoat for all of us. Because we can't purify our sins because we are sinful. So we can't sacrifice another man because that man will never be as good and never be perfect enough to clean our sins away. And no animal is equal to us that they can't 
take away all of our sins as well. So we needed someone who's perfect, holy God and fully man. And that's why Jesus had to die on the cross. Because without that death, without the resurrection, there's no defeat of sin. And what people usually don't focus on is while he's living, is he lived a perfect life. He was tempted in the same ways we were tempted, but he didn't fall to those temptations. We see it 40 days in the wilderness, and Jesus is tempted by Satan, saying, you can turn this, show your power, turn this rock into bread, saying, you can take all this kingdom, you can jump trying to kill yourself, and God will save you. He'll send angels down to save you. But each time he uses the Bible, using the scriptures of the Old Testament, saying, do not challenge your God. Do not worship any other gods except me, for God is a jealous God. Never turning away and always facing those temptations and being beaten, bruised, and killed because he was showing the real kingdom and not trying to make a kingdom for himself. And that's how God used it so that he would die. And then when he was resurrected. And one thing that I always see that I've been seeing more listening to other people's talking in podcasts is that, and Gamaliel says it in Acts, if Jesus wasn't real, and if Jesus didn't have the power, wasn't granted by God, then when he died, it would disappear. It would have been gone. The disciples would have lost. They would have not been teaching, raising these things. But Gamaliel points out, if this is from God, no matter what we do can stop it. And this is when he had Peter and John and had the disciples in prison. And he, and they wanted to kill him. And he's like, we can't kill them because even if we kill them, someone will take their place. So instead they beat him up and let them go. So no matter what the Pharisees and no matter the evil of this world did, they couldn't stop the message of God, which shows us that it's a true message. And we talked about it, that Jesus took the place of animal sacrifices because no animal was perfect. We covered that. And death couldn't hold him. He was resurrected, defeating death, defeating sin. And we see it when he says that I am the resurrection and the life. Which means no one, and no one can come through the Father except through me. So Jesus became a scapegoat. He became a door. A lot of the images we see is a great chasm. And we're on one side and God's on the other. And then we see a cross bridging the chasm that we can walk across. And that's... A simple image to show why we need God. Because no matter how much sin we have, each sin is like a weight. So if we try to jump, no matter how much, we all have some weight. So whether we jump and we fall immediately because we've committed great sins, or we jump and we almost make it, we still won't make it because that weight will hold us down and pull us down. But Jesus gives us a bridge to cross so we don't need to try and jump. We don't need to get there on our own. And it's by grace through faith we have been saved, not by our works so that no one can boast. Paul says it clearly. We can't be saved. And then after dying and resurrected, he shows himself to the disciples and he gives us and them a great commission. Go out and make disciples among all the nations. And while Christ wants us to bring more saviors, save more people, we see in Revelation he doesn't expect a lot of people to come. So our job is to preach. So as a Christian, it's my job to preach to you God's word just to glorify God. Whether you become saved or not is up to you and it's up to God. But for me, my job is to share it and you can decide whether you want to take it or not. So we, so he is up in heaven. Christ is up in heaven preparing a spot for us. And he gave us the great commission to go and make disciples. And we see in Acts that the 12 disciples now known more as the 12 apostles become the leaders of the church and they go share out into the Gentile world. They share into the Jewish world because the Jews still weren't getting it. Not all the Jews fully clicked. So we see different books. We see Paul mainly focused on the Gentile world. And we see in the book of Hebrews and the book of Matthew, it's focused more on the Christian world. And through that, we have the, he sends the Holy Spirit and that's what fulfills God in our lives. So through the Holy Spirit, we're able to show Christ and we're able to ascend to heaven. And with that, we create. he created the church through the church. The church isn't a place, it's the people. So no matter where you are, we're supposed to worship God anyways. And we mentioned Revelation. So in Revelation, Christ will come back. He will save us from sin and death. He'll create a new heaven and a new earth. 
and through that we must respond to Jesus and decide will we accept Christ or will we turn against him. So we'll come to, and whether we'll come to New Jerusalem in the end or not. Thank you.